Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, painting in 15mm is an interesting experience because suddenly you need to be able to see these things from across the table. In particular, I think you're going to see on some of these faces, getting them all in shot is a real challenge. But the blurring effect that you'll see as you put something at arm's length really needs to be overcompensated for. And that's what I've done with these guys here. Now, painting 15mm stuff is not too difficult, and all you're really going to need is one slightly smaller brush. Everything else is much of a much. So, thank you very much to Battlefront for sending along these Panzer Grenadiers for me to have a play around with. All of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now, previously when painting 15mm figures, I've suggested it is easier, and it is still easier. To glue these guys or just blue tack them down to a little bit of sprue beforehand and have them all lined up so you can reach them much more easily, rather than painting them while they're attached to a base. But if you're anything like me, and it's a pretty good chance you might be, uh, it, how often do you end up gluing these things down? You know, you get really excited during assembly, you whip out the box, and you glue them all down, it is still eminently possible to paint these while they are glued onto the base. So that's why I'm going to do it this way, to demonstrate it's not all that difficult. Now since we are going for quite high contrast as our look, what I'm going to do is use fairly dark base coats, shade them, and then use quite bright highlights to really get the most out of the shape of the miniatures. So I've started by priming these guys with grey from Vallejo, although any light grey, even a white, might work here. You just want something where you can see what you're doing and will take a colour fairly easily. Now we'll start off by painting in the skin, and I'm using here red leather from Vallejo. Uh, reason being, this is an area where I'm likely to make mistakes. You'll see that's quite an extreme skin colour, <laughs> but once it's shaded, it's going to look a lot more like, you know, skin in the recesses once we have highlighted it with something else. So, take your time. Now folks are going to ask, what brushes am I using? The short answer here for most of this, I'm going to be using a medium layer brush from Citadel, or something equivalent. Uh, but what size brush should you use? Honestly, whatever brush you can regularly keep control of. The largest that you can use will save you time overall. Now it might look comical now, but trust me, that's going to work fine over time. I've got here some dark sand and added just a little bit of water to it, and we're going to lay down the base coats for the camo smocks. Now this will go on quite well over a nice light primer. Um, dark sand actually covers really well for such a light colour. And I'm doing this now because honestly things like the trousers and such will find much easier to paint later. Now I've painted straight over the top of any equipment belts, uh, pouches, that sort of stuff. Any bigger areas where you've got the bread bag and such, you don't have to paint the base coat over those, but don't worry if you do, because we're starting from the bottom, working up, any other colour we add is just going to be a tidy up stage. So I have, finally, German field grey, and we're going to apply this over the uniform. And you'll see going on at this sort of scale, it is quite dark. But all the same, this is, funnily enough, that perfect base coat or German uniform of this period. So this fella back here, for example, who has got the uh, Zeltbahn smock thing on, don't forget his sleeves would probably be exposed, so paint those in too. Now even on 28mm figures, I would highlight the field grey quite a bit, so this is super dark going on. We'll move on now though, and we're going to start painting in the camo patterns, because here we've still got a little bit of room where we can be quite messy. So what I'm using, this is Tan Earth, and what I have is one of my raggedy old brushes from the stationary aisle, which doesn't really keep much of a point. What I'm going to use this for is to just dab little rough shapes. Uh, the actual, you know, you don't need this to be perfect. What I want is little patches and splatters, and I'm really just doing L shapes. I think you'll see if I can get that in shot, goodness. 15 millimeters, guys, it is a pain in the neck to try and photograph, but <laughs> just cruise around and you are looking to create an impression of the camo. At this scale, does not matter if it's not perfect. About a third of this should be the camo pattern, so 
we're laying down the brown first because we want the green to be a little more prominent when we are done. And then with German Camo Bright Green, and you'll see on the palette, man, this is bright. We're going to do the same thing again. But slightly smaller patches, we want it to look as though it's being crossed over through some of the brown. I would suggest you don't need to add very much of this because it can be quite overpowering. And again, we are really just looking for the impression of the camo. From here on in, the order that you do things doesn't really matter too much. I'm just going to save the black details to last. I'm going to start off with a little bit of khaki and I'm going to paint in the gaiters on these guys. And you'll see straight away why I'm leaving the black to last because I don't mind then if I splatter the boots. You can also paint the bread bags in with these. So, a little bit there. With a tiny touch of cork brown, I'm going to paint straight over the entire water bottle. Now for gas mask canisters, as well as any ammo cans, I'm using refractive green, although the name for this will sometimes change depending on the pot, so it might be retractive green you see. I'll include the number for this one in the description. Now, next to those gas mask canisters, you're quite often going to see a little bundled up roll of what looks like cloth. That was ordinarily going to be the gas mask or gas capes rather themselves, and they tended to be a treated green color. So I'm using, this is literally just called German uniform, and it's quite light going on. But when we shade it, it's going to take on that slightly rasperized aspect, which will work just fine. With German equipment, there is always some other color. On and on it goes. So I have here beige brown, and I'm going to paint in the rifles and any other wooden details. So stick grenades and such like that. When it comes to the details on the rifles that are going to be black later, just paint straight over them. My goodness, you cannot see a thing as I'm doing this. Any leather straps, you can paint with a little bit of mahogany brown. And this is... Quite a nice warm leather color going on. When we shade it, it's going to darken down quite a bit. Obviously, this part is going to depend on whether or not you've got an MG in the unit, but I've got here Retributor Armor from Citadel. Any bronze, gold sort of color will work here. And I just like Retributor Armor because it covers really well. Finally, we're at the home stretch for the base coats. What I have here is German Grey, and this is a great substitute for black at this sort of scale, and also it's the right color for the helmets. Now, earlier on, if you had these with helmet covers, you could just paint them in the same way as the camo. So what I'm going to do is, with a fairly large brush, lay down this German Grey on the areas which are going to be quite easy to reach. So boots, helmets, MGs, and then when you're not confident that you're going to be able to keep a straight line or control of your brush, you can swap to a smaller one. And I've got here, this is a detail brush from the Army Painter. But again, anything just a little smaller here to paint in things like weapon grips and such. Just a little more control. And once you've got all of your base colors down, you can cruise around and just do any last minute tidy up. I did with the Falgrau in a couple of areas and some of the skin. Gosh, it's hard to keep them in shot. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is to shade them. Now I've got here, this is a mixed pot of half and half Agrax Earthshade from Citadel and their Lamian Medium. Now they're about to change the recipe on this, so I do not know in a couple of months time how this will look, so don't ask me. But you could just as easily use Army Painter's Strong Tone, and I would still suggest thin it down with some of the mixing medium that they've got. What I'm going to do is basically bucket this over the entire miniature or miniatures rather and it is going to look real dark but once it's dry that's going to give us plenty of depth to the miniature and then we can shade the parts that we want to highlight so we can highlight the parts goodness me so once this is on we're going to leave it for about half an hour to dry and let's get a look at what that looks like when it is and then at last, once it has dried, you're going to have something that looks like this, which is still a little bit patchy, but that's the idea. We're working towards that. Uh, it is still extremely difficult to try and get these guys in shot. From here, there's really only a handful of things that we're going to highlight. Uh, most of these details, 
As long as they are a separate colour from their surroundings will stand out enough, but one or two things we're going to highlight just to really make these details visible from across the table. So what I have here, this is Highlight US Tank Crew, and it is a Panzer Aces colour, still from Vallejo, so if you're able to get your hands on Vallejo product, you should be able to get this. Uh, if all else fails, you can add just a little bit of ivory to your dark sand from earlier. What I'm going to do, you know, you'll notice that this isn't a terribly different colour from dark sand. It's just slightly less yellow. So I am going to pick out a few extremely high points here and just blop in a little bit of this to change up the colour of some of the camo smocks. Now, particularly on our fella up here at the front, you'll see that that tones down some of that yellow quite a bit while still leaving that warmth in the recess. So that is the short answer to why would I use dark sand for the base coat. That little bit of modulation of color is going to help sell the camo effect. But now we're definitely going to want to highlight the rest of the uniform. So what I've done is mixed up roughly half and half of field gray and stone gray. Now, if you wanted a slightly more green finish here, what you could do instead would be to mix in khaki, and that'll give you a greener finish. What I'm going to do is just quite roughly sketch out some of the high points of the uniform. And you can use this to leave quite a bit of shading intact and get a really nice three-dimensional finish. This is a little more tricky if you've glued you guys to your bases. So like I said, you can paint them glued down like this, but it is still genuinely easier if you do them before attaching them to the base. You'll see this is mostly a style choice. I'm really just looking to block in some of the high points of the model. So if I spin this fellow and we get a look at the back here, see really I'm just sort of sketching out some of the shapes. It's not a terribly precise method. But if for some bizarre reason you do want to take it even further, all you need to do is just mix in a tiny spot more stone grey. And I'm not going to do a huge amount of this, but if you're doing offices or what have you, somebody standing in the front rank of a group, this won't hurt to make them pop just a little more. And one of the other areas where a highlight is really going to improve these is to go with some beige red, and we're going to cover in most of the face. What we're going to do is leave just a little line under the eye and near the lip, but most of the rest of the face we're going to fill in. So don't worry too much if you do cover over, you know, his mouth for example. Just leave those eye sockets and the sides of his nose. I really hope this is the point where suddenly, oh, it all kind of comes together. Because once their faces are on, gosh, they look different. I did mention mixing ivory into your base coats, and that's what I've done here. One dot of ivory and one dot of beige red, and again, not strictly necessary, let's get them in shot. But if you have got any offices, or you just want your front rank guys to look a little smarter, dot their nose and a little line across the top of their cheek. You can highlight that skin even further. And then finally, you can take a little bit of oily steel and just run that along the edges of any metallic details you want to have that gunmetal look to them. Now from this point, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and grab something like black grey or even basalt grey and highlight the edges of the helmets, but at this scale I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference to really merit that much extra work. What I'm going to do though is take these guys outside, hit them with a matte varnish, and then apply their base, and I'll pop the recipe for that in the description too. Let's get a look at all of these guys, what they look like when they're all finished. And there at last, our Panzer Grenadiers are complete. Now painting at 15mm scale, or 1-100 scale specifically, is a slightly different skill set, and at least in my opinion, you are painting for something which is going to be visible from across the table. So there's a few shortcuts you can take, and there are one or two things to change how you might ordinarily do things. In particular, highlighting is one of those things where you want to go a lot brighter than you might otherwise think. So thank you again to Battlefront for sending these guys along, to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, and of course, all of my wonderful patrons for keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. 
Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.